Godzilla, King of the Monsters, is a 1956 kaiju film directed by Terry O. Morse and Disherm Honda. It is a heavily re-edited American adaptation, commonly referred to as an Americanization, of the 1954 Japanese film Godzilla. The film was a Japanese-American co-production, with the original footage produced by Toho and the new footage produced by Jewel Enterprises. The film stars Raymond Burr, Frank Iwanaga, along with Akira Takarada, Momoko Kuchai, Akihiko Harada, and Takashi Shimura, with Haruo Nakajima and Kitsumi Tezuka as Godzilla. In the film, an American reporter covers a giant reptilian monster's attack on Japan. In 1955, Edmund Goldman acquired the 1954 film from Toho and enlisted the aid of Paul Schriebman, Harold Ross, Richard Kay, and Joseph E. Levine to produce a revised version for American audiences. This version dubbed most of the Japanese dialogue into English, altered and removed key plot points and themes, and added new footage with Burr narrating most of the film and interacting with body doubles and Japanese-American actors in an attempt to make it seem like Burr was part of the original Japanese production. Godzilla, King of the Monsters, was theatrically released in the United States on April 27, 1956, and was followed by an international release. The film was responsible for introducing Godzilla to a worldwide audience, as the 1954 film remained unavailable overseas until 2004. Injured American reporter Steve Martin is brought from the ruins of Tokyo to a hospital filled with maimed and wounded citizens. A recent acquaintance, Emiko, discovers him by chance among the victims and attempts to find a doctor for him. Martin recalls in flashback stopping over in Tokyo, where a series of inexplicable ship disasters catches his attention. When a victim of those disasters washes up on Oto Island, Martin flies there for the story, along with security officer Tomo Iwanaga. There he learns of the island inhabitants' long-held belief in a sea monster god known as Godzilla, which they believe is causing the disasters. That night, a storm strikes the island, destroying many houses and killing some villagers. The islanders believe that Godzilla is responsible for the destruction. Martin returns to the island with Dr. Imani, who is leading a team to investigate its ruins. Huge radioactive footprints and a prehistoric trilobite are discovered. An alarm rings and Martin, the villagers, and Dr. Imani's team head up a hill for safety. Near the summit, they encounter Godzilla and quickly flee downhill. Dr. Imani later returns to Tokyo and deduces that Godzilla is 400 feet 122 meters tall and was resurrected by repeated H-bomb tests in the Pacific. To Imani's dismay, the military responds by attempting to kill the creature with depth charges. Martin contacts his old friend, Dr. Daisuke Sarazawa, for dinner, but Sarazawa declines due to planned commitments with his fiancée and drive. Yamani's daughter, Emiko. Emiko goes to Sarazawa's home to break off her arranged engagement to him because she is actually in love with Idio Ogata, a salvage ship captain. Dr. Sarazawa, however, gives her a demonstration of his secret project, which horrifies her. She is sworn to secrecy and unable to bring herself to break off the engagement. Godzilla surfaces from Tokyo Bay, unharmed by the depth charges, and attacks the city, destroying a train, before returning to the bay. The next morning, the JSDF supercharges the tall electrical towers along Tokyo's coast to repel the monster. Godzilla resurfaces that night and breaks through the electrical towers and JSDF defense line using his atomic heat breath. Martin documents Godzilla's rampage via tape recorder and is injured during the attack. Godzilla returns to the sea and the flashback ends. Martin wakes up in the hospital with Emiko and Ogata. Horrified by the destruction, Emiko reveals to them the existence of Dr. Sarazawa's oxygen destroyer, which disintegrates oxygen atoms in salt water and causes all marine organisms to die of acidic asphyxiation. Emiko and Ogata go to Dr. Sarazawa to convince him to use his weapon on Godzilla, but he initially refuses. After watching a television broadcast showing the nation's plight, Sarazawa finally gives in to their pleas. 
a Navy ship takes Ogata, Sarazawa, Yamam, Martin, and Amiko out to the deepest part of Tokyo Bay. Ogata and Sarazawa are lowered down by lifelines near Godzilla to plant the weapon. Ogata is pulled up, but Sarazawa delays his ascent and activates the device. He radios the surface of its success and wishes Amiko and Ogata happiness together. Sarazawa cuts his lifeline, taking the secret of his invention to the grave. Godzilla succumbs to the oxygen destroyer, dissolving his body and bones. All aboard the ship mourned the loss of Dr. Sarazawa. Martin reflects that the world can live again due to Sarazawa's sacrifice.